Hello and welcome to this video on intermediate data transformations in Snowpark for Python. Uh, I'm Christopher Marland, a Snowflake Solutions Architect here at Aimpoint Digital, and I'm also a Snowflake data superhero. Now, this video is aimed at people who have a little bit of base knowledge with Snowpark for Python, or maybe even PySpark. Um, if that's not you, not to worry, I have an introductory video that will get you right up to speed. So, in terms of what this video is going to cover, um, first we'll get started with how to get to and from pandas, looking at that interplay between pandas and the snow park. Then we'll go into UDFs and talk about those kind of custom transformations, packages you want to bring in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that will cover the basics. And then in the more advanced video, we'll get into the nitty gritty of that. Um, then we'll look at semi-structured data and how to handle that in Snowpark for Python. That is a little bit complicated. Um, so I'm just gonna show you the best way to, to deal with that. And then we'll finish with window functions, which are also quite different. Um, but you know, if you've, if you've used them in, in PySpark, for example, you'll find that very easy. If not, then I'll make sure that you, you completely understand how to use them. So let's get started. You'll see in the description below that there is a link where you can download this um, Jupyter Notebook file. Um, and you'll see what, what I see here, essentially. So to get started, I'm just going to import the necessary packages uh, that I want, the necessary libraries. Then I've got a function which creates my Snowpark session. I'm going to create that Snowpark session. And then I'm just going to run um, use database and use schema. Wonderful. So now into the pandas section. What I'm doing here is I'm just creating a pandas data frame. I have some IDs, some websites, and then what I'm doing is I'm sort of iterating through that list of websites and downloading the HTML. Um, and you'll see that this is then converted into a pandas data frame. So let's run this. And here you can see what the pandas data frame looks like. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some SQL, which is going to create a table in Snowflake. And that table in Snowflake is going to be able to hold these values of my pandas data frame. Um, and you'll see that I do dot collect afterwards. Um, if you remember from the previous course, uh, or the previous video, sorry, um, you'll remember that dot collect is the way, oh, along with dot show, is the way to do that lazy execution. If you don't do dot collect or dot show, you'll be wondering, wait, why why did this not run? And that's because you need that dot collect or dot show in order for the Snowpark code to actually execute. So I'll do that now. And we can see, okay, that's been successfully created. And now what I need to do is create a Snowpark data frame that is going to be um, a sort of, you know, conversion point between my pandas data frame and my snowpark data frame. And in, in doing so, I'll be ingesting that data. So I'm going to call this SP data frame, snowpark data frame. And this equals demo session. And I'm going to use the, the method write pandas. Okay. So first off, my data frame is that PD data frame, data frame, table name is Wikipedia pages, database is going to be for me, Christopher Marland, because um, I have a, a database named after me, um, schema is going to be demos. Of course, these values for you are going to be slightly different. Um, you just choose the database and the schema that is appropriate for you. Now I'm going to say quote identifiers equals false. Um, by default, this is set to true by Snowpark. Um, and what it means is that there will be quotes around your 
column names and that causes all sorts of trouble i find um it's best to avoid them um if you do have uh sort of multiple words in your table titles i always say underscore them and i think that is the industry standard uh, i'm just going to say overwrite equals true as well because that is the default value um false is the default value sorry um, and that just means if that is false it's going to append if it's true it's going to overwrite okay so let me run this now and there we go so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to dot show this just to see how that table looks in snowflake And there we can see that is exactly as expected. Lots of HTML tags. Looks very ugly, but we shall deal with that soon. Wonderful. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to just convert that back. Um, and there's no sort of specific purpose why I want to convert that back. I just want to show you how to convert that back. So we're doing something slightly pointless um, just to show off, really. So we call this back to pandas equals, I'm gonna use my SP data frame and just do two pandas. There we are. And let's just call that and see what it looks like. There we go. That looks pretty much exactly the same as the one up here. So that has been a resounding success. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with the concept of UDFs, user defined functions. These are custom bits of uh, transformation logic that you can put into functions and you can call them as you would call any other function. Now, what's a bit more exciting in Snowflake is that you can code these um, user-defined functions in languages other than SQL. You can do them in SQL if you want, but you can also do them in, for example, Python. Now, what's doubly more exciting is through Snowflake's partnership with Anaconda, we have a curated list of Python packages that you can bring into your Python UDFs. So in Snowpark, we can actually register Python UDFs and then use them in our transformations. In this video, I'm just going to focus on registering temporary UDFs. And in the advanced video, which will follow in a couple of weeks, um, what I will do is I will start sort of looking into how you can be a bit more professional and a bit more scalable with how you do UDFs. But for now, let's just look at temporary UDFs and how we can use them in our transformations. So what I have here is I have a function that's pre-written. And what it does is it takes a HTML string, it gets rid of the HTML tags, and it also gets rid of any sort of new lines that are bundled together. Um, multiple new lines just look very silly. So I'm just going to create this function here. And what I'm doing is I'm taking some HTML from that back to pandas data frame. And what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing that as a kind of test case. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print the function um, sort of applied against that test case. So that looks pretty good. Um, no HTML tags there, no like massive new lines. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to register that as a Python UDF in, in Snowpark. And to begin with, what I'll do is I will just copy and paste this and I'll get rid of Dev, so it's just clean HTML. And I'm going to create the UDF here. So how I do that is at UDF, and then some opening brackets. And what I need to do to begin with is I'm going to uh, specify the return type, which is string type. Remember to put the brackets at the end. You are, you know, sort of 
saying something is a a snow park data type you need the 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 brackets at the end so then i'm going to take the input types which should be a list but i i only want to put in a string here so that's what i shall do then i need to specify the name for it and that is in html um, it seems a bit redundant to have to specify the name since I've got a name in, in my def statement, but there we are, them's the rules. Packages. So the packages is basically a list of Python packages that are not sort of, you know, native to Python that are, um, available in Snowpark for Python. Um, in the description, you will see a link to the list. Um, of, of packages that are available via the Snowflake Anaconda partnership. The two that I want in this specific case is Beautiful Soup 4 and LXML. And just in case this has already been registered, I'm going to say replace equals true. Okay, so let's run this. And there we are done okay so what i want to do now is i want to take our snowpark data frame the one we created in the previous section of the video and i want to apply this uh, function that i've created to that html column um, to create a website text column so i'm just going to call this new data frame ndf it's SP data frame dot with column because we're creating a new column and it's going to be called website text. And then I'm just going to do clean HTML, HTML being the column. And then I'm just going to do dot drop HTML. There we are. And just to make sure that that works, we want to show, um, which will actually execute. And there we are. We have our website text looking very good, looking just like this text up here. So that is how you register a temporary UDF and execute a temporary UDF or, or any UDF for that matter. Um, and as I said in the advanced video, we'll look at doing that in a way that is less temporary. So in this section of the video, we're going to look at unstructured data. Unstructured data is data that uh, still has a structure. However, it's not the sort of uniform row and column structure that we are very used to. And two of the most common types are XML and JSON. In this video, we're going to look at parsing JSON data. In order to be able to conceptualize how we do that, it's important to understand table functions. Table functions are functions that don't return unique and individual values per cell, but rather they produce entire tables. We're going to be using the flatten table function in this video. And what Flatten does is it takes your semi-structured data and for each record, it creates a new row and it also produces um, five different columns. Um, the most important being value, um, but you can read about the others in the link that will be in the description below. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take some JSON data from the internet. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use um, a Frosty Friday challenge. Um, Frosty Friday is basically a community initiative that I run with Mike Droog. And every week we produce a Snowflake challenge aimed at improving the skills of Snowflake users in the community. So in week 25, we have some JSON data. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a stage that points to the S3 bucket with that JSON data. And then I'm creating a table that is basically from, you know, using the JSON data in that stage. So let's run that. There we go. And I'm just going to create a JSON data frame or a variable I'm calling JSON data frame. Um, 
demo.session table and that JSON table just created. And then let's just show that. And yeah, there we are. We have what we want. So our first step is going to be to flatten that data. Um, and to flatten that, we need to use a table function. So step one is going to be JSON DF dot join table function. And join table function, um, what that essentially means is we're going to, you know, sort of use the table function and we want the result of that to be joined back to our original data frame. So this is quite like a lateral flatten um, if you're used to doing this in SQL. So the first thing is I'm going to um, specify the, uh, the table function that we want to use and that's flatten. And then what I need to do from there is I need to specify the parameters that I would otherwise put in. Um, so the first one is going to be the input or the path. Um, so that is our data column. This is what we want to do, the extraction. Um, and now that is the source. And then we, in, in specifying that path, um, we're going to do lit sources, okay? So within the data column, the path is sources. Okay, and then I'm just going to do a dot select, and I want to retrieve the index. I want to retrieve the path, and I want to retrieve the value. Okay, let's run that. And then let's do a show statement. See what we get. Okay, there we are. So we've dug in. You see, uh, we've now got a a new row for each of these records. Well, what I want to do now is I want to um, extract distance, DWD station ID, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and turn them into columns themselves. And the way I do that is I want to use a with column statement and I use a function called JSON extract path text. Um, and what that function essentially does is it just looks into the column specified and it grabs the value to the corresponding key in that kind of key value pair. So step two, and I'm using uh, brackets there. That just means I can be quite free with my, my new lines. Step one with column, I'll use this type of with column. This looks a bit nicer, I think. And what I want to extract is distance. Um, so I'm going to call this column distance. And I'm going to use that JSON extract path text. The column I want to extract is value. And the actual key that I want to extract from, from that is going to be distance. So I'm going to put that in a lit um, statement here for lit distance. Just to check this works, I'm going to do that dot show so you can see uh, what that looks like. So here you can see all the distances are extracted. Now you're probably going to be quite glad to know that I'm not going to um, fill all of these out. So I do have something I can copy and paste here. So I'll, I'll copy and paste that, and this just extracts each of those values. Um, I suggest you may want to tr to pause the video here um, and just do this yourself. Um, I think that'd be a good exercise. Um, but yeah, so pause the video here um, and then I'll just wait two seconds and when you press play, you'll hear my voice continuing, okay? Grand, so I imagine you have done that now. So what I'm gonna do to finish, I'm just going to drop the uh, value column because I, I no longer need that. So there we are. And let's have a look at the result, just to check everything has, has gone to plan. And there we can see we have some nice flattened and extracted data. In the last part of this video, we're going to be talking about window functions. Now, window functions are functions where the current value is relevant, but also other values 
in the data are relevant as well. And so it's necessary to know how to interact with the, the other rows in your data. In SQL, you tend to define your windows um, all together. It's all normally in one line. Um, and that's relatively simple. In Snowpark, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, and basically what you do is you define the window via a window object. And then what you do from there is you, when you are sort of calling the statement or the function, whichever uh, window function you want to use, you then sort of say, this is the specific window object to use. That might seem a little hazy, but I, I imagine will become very clear and will actually be revealed to be not as complicated as it sounds. So in this section, um, we're going to use some catalog sales data from the Snowflake uh, sample database. Um, so I'm just going to create this data frame here. Um, it's already pre-written and, and documented. So if you want to have a look, little look at what's going on there, you, you can. Um, so you can see we have order numbers, dates, a name for the warehouse, the state the warehouse belongs in, and uh, the tax that uh, has been paid for each order. Now, what I want to do is I want to see which warehouses are paying um, the most tax in each state. Um, and the way that I can, I can see that is by basically doing a median aggregation. So that's what's going on down here. We're grouping by the state and the warehouse name, and we're getting the median tax uh, in, in this aggregation statement, and we're calling that median EXT tax. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because um, we, we could just have more orders in certain warehouses, so median is much fairer. When you've run that, that might take a little bit more time than it took for me. Um, this has been a pre-run um, for the sake of the video. So if yours is taking a little bit longer, don't worry about that. That is expected. So let's just have a little look at what that is. Um, and again, this is running quite slow for me. Again, it could be um, a lot slower for you. This is, this is pre-run. Um, so I'm just going to pause the video here. Um, okay, so that run in 27.1 seconds. Cool, so what I need to do now is I need to define the window. So I'm gonna create a variable called window. That is window dot partition by, so this is the column we want to do that partition um, by, so that would be state. Um, and I want to order by that uh, median ext tax column that we just created. So I shall run that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the ranked data frame and that's going to be this catalog DF ag that we just created. Select, I want to select state warehouse name. And then I'm going to call the rank window function and it's dot over. I use the window variable that I've created. I'm just going to do dot as to specify that I want this column to be called the rank by state column. So let's run that. And that was pretty quick. Might be a little uh, a little longer for you. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that now. So I'm going to do ranks data frame. Let's order by the state and then the rank by state. And I'm going to do dot show, and just to make sure I have a clearer image of my data, I'm going to do dot show 30. I'm going to pause the video while that runs. Okay, so that's now run, um, and we can see uh, what's going on there. So these two are pretty evenly matched. Um, we've only got one in, in Florida, so that's not a surprise. But yeah, that's run pretty well. Um, so as you can see, it is a little bit more complicated than it is in um, in SQL. However, hopefully you can see that it's actually not too complicated, which is always good news. 
So that is the end of our intermediate data transformations um, in Snowpark for Python. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned a lot. Um, there will be a following video on advanced data transformations. Um, so please do look out for that. Um, and if you've enjoyed this video, do like, do subscribe. Thank you very, very much.